Well, Emma Dabbery is a sociologist and research fellow at Goldsmiths in London, where she's written extensively on Nigeria and on the abductions of the schoolgirls. She joins us now live in the studio. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. We've just uh, heard of a video purporting to be from Boko Haram leader Abubakar Shekau, promising more attacks in Nigeria and saying he will sell those abducted schoolgirls. What's your reaction to that? Well, um, I think the timing of his announcement is um, extremely interesting. I think he's chosen that time to really um, impact on the um, uh, on the um, events that are about to happen in Nigeria, the world. Um, but also, that's coming on the back of the president's statement last night, re trying to reassure Nigerians. Do you think that's backfired and raised rather than diffused the tension? I think so, and I think the attitude seems to be that. Um, the president should have spoken out on this a lot earlier. So to only um, speak three weeks later, um, something that I think the feeling is that should have been said initially, um, I think is the issue. So to only be set, to still only be talking at this stage, but for there to be no concrete plan of action. Indeed, is, uh, but we're talking about timing as well. I mean, timing of uh, Boko Haram, but also, I mean, it's just before the World Economic Forum opens in Abuja, and. President Jonathan decides to make an announcement just before that. What do you think ordinary Nigerians feel? I think they feel that really in the country it's just business as usual, which I think are the words that were used about um, what's going to happen at the um, World Economic Forum. And they feel that um, it's just lip service now being paid to, to, the, to, to what's happened rather than any real commitment to try and ensure um, the safety of the girls. Now, our our economics girls. and business editor Michael Wilson is here with us. Uh, Michael, you're going, well, hopefully tomorrow to, to this. I mean, how much is this going to be an issue at that forum, do you think? It'll be a big issue. All the African leaders there will be asked that question, won't they? I mean, including Kenya as well, where there have been similar um, outrages. Um, uh, corporately, what's happening is that a couple of quite high-ranking people are now not going, which includes um, South Africa's marketing, marketing operation. Um, and again, I think once, that, once those leading people start to think, and, and their organizations will be to say to them, actually, we don't want, to, don't want to be put at risk. I was going to a similar conference a couple of years ago in Nairobi where there were explosions, and that's happened there. They just cancelled the whole Thing. Now, they won't cancel this, obviously, because you say it has to be business as usual. But those are the kind of questions that have to be answered. And it, I'm not sure it hurts investment. Mm. I think what it does is it kind of, it may just makes people doubt the resolve of business leaders and politicians. I think people will still invest in frontier funds because they are good to invest in generally. They don't bear a great deal of relation to the global markets mm. and they're considered good value. But, this, but the success story that Africa needs to put out is clear going to be slightly eroded by uh, an outrage if, it, if, it's, if it's allowed to happen. But you're talking about actually the bomb blasts of last week rather mm. than the abduction of the girls. Emma, is it that girls um, are just not valued as much as they should be? Well, I think, yeah, globally um, there is um, the very uh, real fact that the lives of women are not valued um, in the way that the lives of men are. We see that with the coverage um, over um, events where men are murdered or kidnapped um, will be a lot more than when it's girls. And then that's compounded, I think, when it's black girls as well, black women's lives almost being rendered invisible, obviously. So I think it's a, an interne intersection of gender, class, and race in this issue. Yeah, but it is, isn't the fact, sorry to interrupt you there, the fact that this is, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm asking you this to understand what you're saying, because, I mean, it's the responsibility of the Nigerian government. Mm. I mean, you know, and everybody in Nigeria is black. I mean, it's the responsibility of the Nigerian government to look after their people and to try and reassure people that they're doing everything. So it's got nothing to do with the rest of the world. It's the Nigerian government. Actually, well, I, I would say it's, it's kind of a perfect storm of inaction. Um, the Nigerian government and also the global response, a lot of different factors have come together to just result in nothing. Really. But the global response will only come if people uh, see what you're doing for your own people. I mean, why should it's, they be the ones doing it for you? But the global response has come, I think, because people have seen what ordinary Nigerians are doing. And if one 
positive can be taken from this. It's been the ability of um, ordinary Nigerians to mobilize and to get their voices out there, largely through social networking, hashtags such as Bring Back Our Girls. So we've really seen the kind of collective energy of the Nigerian people who, are, to a large extent, usually re remain voiceless. Indeed, uh, one of the issues is uh, for the World Economic Forum, is, uh, and President Goodluck Donaldson has touched on it, he's talked about um, how education, and presumably he means education of everybody in Nigeria, Michael. Yes, he does. Uh, he, means, he means education, and he means job creation, and he means inclusive wealth as well. That's what this whole conference is, is scheduled to be about. Inclusive is the absolute key word in all that. And I hope in the next, in the next three days, Days, as it begins on Wednesday, that statesmen become statesmen because that's what they need to do. They need to stand above all this, and they still must get that message out because there are so big. The president of China there. I mean, we don't even know whether the president of South Africa is going. Nothing has been confirmed because of security reasons. But what they have to do is to use this opportunity to stand above all this and also make sure those ideas are swapped about this inclusivity of wealth in Africa. There is wealth there. It's not shared. It needs to be. So, so in, in the face of, of all this now, I mean, what's Nigeria going to gain from hosting this world economy? It'll world? get, well, it's become the world, it's become Africa's largest economy, which we know whether you think that's, uh, whether we think that's it, that, that, matter, that matters or not. It's reputation and it's self-examination. And often, often Africa is consumed of being opaque and corrupt. This is a, an opportunity for Nigeria to say, we are going to solve this one way or the other with the help of our allies. That's the message I would be giving. Emma and Michael, thanks very much indeed for joining us.